Hello and welcome back to another live 2D tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to create extra expressive animal ears in live 2D. Now I did make one last year. This is a updated version since I've improved a significant amount since then. And I've got a few tips and tricks on how to create these extra fluffy ears. So first I'm going to go over the basic explanation of how to create these ears. So obviously you have your animal ears drawn up, but there's actually three parts to how these ears are going to be actually moving. So obviously you have the base physic, then we also have the base idle animation, and then we also have the movement link to our eyebrows, which is from the original video. So we're going to be starting off with our basic physics, and that is our up, down, left and right, as well as angle Z and our extra step, which is the eye blinking. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new parameter folder. This is to keep everything organized. We're going to call this ear physics and we're going to need to create a few new parameters here. So I'm going to be demonstrating with my ears here, which has two or three core parts to it. And a lot of ears tend to have the two core parts, which is the outer ear part. So that's going to be the main ear, as well as the fluff on the inside. If your ears don't have fluff on the inside, then you can skip making parameters for the fluff. Or alternatively, if you have extra parts in your ear, you might want to separate those to create better motion later on. So for both of our parts, we are going to create two parameters each for both ears, so left and right. There we are. So you should have eight parameters now. That's four per ear. And as I said, if you don't have the inner fluff, then you'll just have four parameters total. So two per ear. If you have particularly long ears, you may want to separate it out into three different parts and I'll show you why in just a moment and why we separate it out into two parameters. So the next thing we're going to need to do is set up our deformers for these. So our deformers are going to be split between our main ear and our inner ear. So what we're going to need to do is select all of those parts and put them in one deformer. There we are. So it should be separated like so. So if I move this deformer, it's the main ear part. And if I move this one, it is just the fluff on the inside. So there is a couple of options here. We can use this one deformer to set up both of the parameters. So for example, my main ear left ear, I could use to make both of my main ear and ear tip. However, I prefer the movement if it's on separate deformers, so I'm going to go ahead and create that. If you are intending to set it up on one deformer, make sure that you synthesize the corners between your two parameters that you've set it up on. There we go, so I've now got two deformers for each ear part. I have main ear left, ear tip left, as well as ear fluff left and fluff tip left and then the same for the right side as well. So we're going to put three keyforms on the corresponding parameters. So main ear left goes to here. There we are. So all of our parameters now should have keyforms on them. So I like to set them both up at the same time. If you do struggle, you can set up one at a time. Alternatively, if you have symmetrical ears like mine here, you can also set up just one of the ears and then reflect it over. I do have a video on the topic right up here on the eye card or in the description below, uh, which uses the eye as an example. But that can also be applied here if you would like to just set it up easily and then basically copy and paste it. Obviously, if you have non-symmetrical ears, that's not going to work out for you. So I'm just going to set them up as normal here. So we're going to go ahead and select both of our main ears here. So main ear left and main ear right. And then we're going to set the right side, so 30. And we're just going to bend this over here. We want this to be a bigger movement 
So we're going to make sure that our whole ear is moving over. And we're going to do the same for the left side as well, so at minus 30. And next we're going to do the ear tip. So if we select the deformers below these, and we're also going to do the same thing, left and right. This time it's only going to be the top part of our ears that we're going to be focusing on. So that is the main ear set up. Now we have to do the exact same thing with our ear fluff. So we're going to go ahead and select those. And then we're going to make these move left and right for both the main part and the tip. There we are. So that should be all set up now. So we've got our left and right movement for both the outer and inner ears. So next we need to hop into our physics settings. So we need to go ahead and add a new physics group here. And we're going to call this ear physics left. And we're not going to add any presets here because we're going to set that up ourselves. So first for our inputs, we're actually going to add four different things. So we need to add angle X, angle Y, angle Z, and our eye left open. There we go. We also need to make sure that our eye left open is changed to angle and we can tweak the effectiveness as so. There we go. And we're also going to change our normalization of input here. And we're only changing this for the angle to about minus 30 and 30 for the minimum and maximum. And then next we're going to add a couple of pendulums. And we're going to tweak the settings as so. So the first Number two, let's hop over to our output settings. And this is where we're going to pop in our new physics parameters that we made. Let's go ahead and find those. We're doing the left side first. Let's go ahead and select these. So it should be four of them. There we go. And it's going to set them at the default scale. You will need to tweak this a bit based on your model because it won't move. You can also press increase output, automatically set it. it. I do find it does look a bit awkward, so I'd like to tweak it myself. There we go. So we need to make sure that our main parts are set on pendulum one. This one isn't. Let's change that. And the tips should be placed on pendulum number two. This is because they should be reacting after our main movement. So if we look at this now, and once we've got this set up, we can simply press duplicate, change this to ear physics right, and then change our output parameters to our right side. And you see live 2D is being smart and it will change them for us. If it doesn't pop up with that message, you will have to just do it manually, but just set them all to your right side parameters. And then make sure that your input is set to I right open instead of I left. And there's one other thing you need to do. So with the left side here, we're just going to need to go ahead and reflect our input for Y and I left open. And that will make them bounce together. Now, this is a good opportunity to test how your ears are actually looking. So looking at this right now, I can see that my main ear movement isn't enough for my preference. Obviously, I like to have my ears moving around quite a bit. And this is very minimal as it is right now. So let me go ahead and tweak that. That looks a little bit better now. So once you've got it initially set up, you can still go back and edit your parameters if you're not feeling that the movement is sufficient enough or if they're moving too much, you might actually want to tweak it afterwards as well. So actually setting it up in the physics is a good way to sort of see how it's moving. So that is the physics portion out of the way. The next part we're going to cover is the idle animation. So we're going to go ahead and create a new folder for that as well. And we're going to call this ear idle. Remember to keep organized much easier to find things if you're putting things in nice neat folders and for this one i'm just going to create four new parameters there we go so we should have four new parameters and we're also going to need to create new deformers as well here this is going to be on top of our physics deformers it's going to be one for each part so our main ear will have an idle We're going to set these up on each of our parameters, just like we did with the physics. 
There we go. And we're going to set this up the exact same way as our physics, but we're going to ignore the tip part. So only the main movement. And I will say that if you have the time or you would like to, you can also set up this animation with more deformers and more parameters. This is just the most basic version for an idle animation. And we're going to need to grab up our animator tool here. The first thing we're going to need to do is save. And then we're going to hop up to this menu here and change to animation. And it will pop up with this window here. We're going to need to click and drag our file down to our timeline and click the first option, should be default. It will pop up with this box. My model's a little bit funny because I deleted the body on this one, so it's just the head. But we can safely resize this down. I'm going to go ahead and put it in our so down here we have the timeline and if you would like to know a little bit more about the animator tool in live 2d i did create a video on how to create a basic hand wave and i do go into a little bit more depth there about how this animation tool basically works so if you'd like to check that out that'll be in the icard and the description as well so we are going to go ahead and set up our basic idle animation here so the way i like to do it and i'm gonna say you can do this however you like so however you would like your ears to move passively we basically want the ear to come up then down then have a little bounce before returning to normal so we're going to go ahead and set this up here so i'm going to make sure everything is set to zero to begin with and i like to do one ear at a time and remember the fluff on the inside should be at a little bit more of a delay than the outer ear so i like to have a little play around with the values first then i like to see how that looks We're also going to need to do the fluff as well. A little tip that I have is I usually match up the fluff with the ear as well, but I keep it a few frames after. And once you're happy with one ear, you can actually copy the values of the ear that you've done onto the other ear. Simply follow the track. And obviously I don't want both of my ears moving at the same time. I'd quite like just one of them to move every now and then. So I'd like to shift the other side over a little bit. I will need to extend my timeline a bit. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over and you can see it resets back to the first one a bit too soon so we're going to extend this a little bit longer and obviously you can go back and change this whenever you need to so we're going to go ahead and save this first and then we're going to need to export for runtime as well and you need to export it as a motion file so you don't need to change anything on here you can just export it and don't forget to put it as idle ear or you can just set it as idle animation and you would need to save this in your export folder so we're going to do that a little bit later so the last thing we're going to need to do in live 2d itself is set up our expressive ears for the eyebrows this is only going to be two parameters here so we're going to create a new folder again here expressive then we need two parameters There we go. And then we need two new deformers as well. We're actually going to combine the whole ear here. And then set up our parameters with three keyforms like we did with the other ones. So for these ones, it's going to be a little bit different from our physics one, where when it's at 30, we want them to be up. And when it's at minus 30, we want them to be down. Let's go ahead and set that up. There we go. So that should be all set up now. So up and down. And we're going to make sure that we export everything. And make sure that when you're saving your animation file, that it's exported into your VTube Studio folder as well. So I've loaded it into VTube Studio here. And you can see right off the bat that the physics are indeed working. So it's reacting to our blink and our head turns. And you might want to go back after tweaking this. For example, I did this really quickly. So I would want to fine tune this movement a little bit more. 
And then the other two things, we do need a little bit of extra setup here. So let's go ahead and go into the settings. And then in the parameter settings, which is the third window up there, you'll see this idle animation. We're going to set this as our idle ear. It should pop up as long as you've saved it into the right folder. And you can see it's starting to work immediately. And obviously, if you're unhappy with the timing, you can go back into your live 2D and then edit the timeline on the animation itself. And the last thing we need to do is do our eyebrows. So that's going to require us scrolling down to the bottom here. And we're going to create two new parameters settings. We're going to do the left ear first. We're going to set our input to brow left Y and then our output to our expressive ear left. And we'll do the same with the right side as well. Let's give that a go. And as you can see, we have a little bit more control over them. And that is the basic way to create expressive ears. So obviously in this video, I did set them up quite quickly. Ordinarily, I'd spend a lot more time fine tuning the movement, but hopefully that gave you an idea on how to basically set them up. Would recommend spending a little bit more time making sure it all looks nice in the movement. You can get results just like this by just spending a little bit of time setting it up. But these ears do have the exact same setup that I just showed you today. Get out there and make some expressive animal ears, huh? <laughs>